Hello everyone, this is Jay Dobbins of the official Marvel DC Multiverse. We are live at Planet Comic Con 2024, and I have an interesting and talented author, author with me here today. Please let everyone know who you are and where you're from. Uh, I'm Todd Monastock. I'm from Inglewood, California. Inglewood, Colorado, and I write Edge of Your Seat Epic Fantasy. All right, so is this your first time here at Planet Comic Con? Uh, it is not my first time, it is my fourth time at Planet Comic Con. So, uh, what can you tell us about, you know, like one of your books? Absolutely. I'll give you the pitch for this one. This is Tower of the Fool, and it centers around four characters who have come to the Champions Academy, which is the only place in this fantasy world that you can go to learn magic without killing yourself. There's a trick to it. If you don't know how to open your soul bar correctly, your soul will bleed out, and you're dead. So, it centers around these four main characters here. We have the brutish warrior druid from Fendir. We have the ice princess of Keltavar. Oh, by the way, they're from two kingdoms that have been at war for 30 years. You put them in a room together, the knives are coming out. They hate each other. In the background here, we've got this scrappy little street urchin here. She hates them all. She thinks they're all entitled jerks, doesn't want to know any of them. Then we have the main character of the first episode, Braum. Braum is a young man who longs to be a quadruple. That is to say, a wizard. That is to say, a graduate of this academy. And he's been waiting for his letter to Hogwarts this whole time. He finally gets it. He's going to the Champions Academy. He's so excited. He's going to become a quadrant, except... No, he's not. Because that trick I mentioned, you have to bond with three other students that they assign you. And he's stuck with this train wreck, right? So as these four people are coming together, trying to get over their differences and form this quad, they stumble across a secret that no one knows. The four kindly super wizards who bring all the young people here to make sure they don't hurt themselves aren't kind at all. This isn't actually a school. It's a slaughterhouse. That's all I'll say about that. Alrighty. So, um, what made you... Uh, what, what influenced you to do fantasy? Uh, oh my gosh. So, when I was 14, my parents divorced. And I had no control over the situation, and I hated it. And I fell into epic fantasy, high fantasy, as a form of escapism. I didn't want to deal with what was going on in my life. And in this story, the good guys always won in the end. They always figured out how to beat the Sauron. They always figured out how to win in the end, right? And my Sauron was this divorce when my parents were splitting up, and I wanted to control it. I wanted to beat it, right? Unfortunately, I didn't in my real life. They did get divorced. But it gave me a bridge to go from a place where I was very vulnerable and was prone to probably doing something more destructive than reading books and instead I grew this love of epic fantasy and then I started writing myself later on. You know, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I admire people who use their imagination. You know, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm the same way. So, but the fact that you have something as beautiful, a story as beautiful as this and the artwork is, wow, breathtaking. Like, you know, it's... It, it makes me, you know, when, like when I read books, it just makes me feel like, you know, I can picture the, uh, the character and what the character's doing and, you know, how they're saying things and the tone and everything like that. And that's what, you know, when it, when it comes to using imagination, that's what, you know, that's, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's my favorite thing in the world is writing books. Well, aside from hanging out with my family. My second favorite thing is writing books, and I do it all day long. You know, they say, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. That is my life right now. I probably work 80 hours a week. You can ask Becca about that. And I love every second of it. Becca's my assistant, who's behind the camera right now, just in case the viewers didn't know that. Um, and uh, um, I, I can't wait to do the next thing, right? I can't wait to go to the next level. I can't wait to write the next book, to go to the next con, to talk to the next super fan. That is what I love. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for your time, sir. My pleasure. Thank you so much for coming by. Anytime. So that concludes this interview. Feel free to follow us on Instagram. We are available on iTunes, Google Play Music app, Spotify, and of course, YouTube.